So in this video, we're going to talk more about the BJT, and we're going to try to find the current, uh, or the current density within the BJT. So in the last video, we said, well, if we've got this PNP type structure, and we could just as easily have analyzed an NPN, but uh, it's, in my opinion, a little easier to work with holes in this situation. We said we've got a bunch of holes on this P side. Uh, we've got a bunch of holes on this P side. And we've got a bunch of electrons in this N side. And when we apply a voltage uh, to this PN junction on the left, this is acting like a diode. So we're just getting, uh, essentially we're just getting current out of that diode. And then we want to collect all of that current on the right hand side. So we reverse bias this diode. So this is just acting like our bucket that's collecting all of the holes that get swept across uh, these regions. And so for that reason, we call this the emitter, this the base, and this the collector because the emitter is emitting holes across the base into the collector, which collects them. Okay, fine. And let's also just draw in these depletion regions so that we know that those exist. So how do we find the current? Um, well, we the, the two things that we want are the current flowing uh, across this junction, so across this first PN junction, and the current flowing across this second PN junction. If we have those, then we have all the other currents in the system because we can just use KCL to figure, figure out the current flowing here, 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 wherever we want. So all we need is the current flowing across these two junctions. And let's give some names to this stuff. So this is V, uh, let's say this, the voltage we're applying between the emitter and the base. So let's call this VEB. And this voltage is the voltage we're applying from the base to the collector. So let's call that VBC. Um, and let's call this current, uh, since it's flowing across the emitter, JE, and this current, uh, JC. Okay, cool, we've got some names for stuff. So also let's just worry about the whole current for now. Um, or just worry about how the holes are moving in the semiconductor. We can worry about the electrons later um, and then just add back add back in that result. So we're going to pretend there aren't any electrons in this system, or at least not for, uh, not for charge carrier purposes. And so how do we figure out what these currents are? Because that's what we're trying to find ultimately. We're trying to find JE and JC because these will tell us how our BJT responds to an applied voltage. Um, now you might say, well, isn't this on the left-hand side just a diode? Can't we just treat uh, this whole thing like a diode? And yeah, you, you totally could. So uh, we know what the current in a, in a diode looks like. We know that's just, I is just some IS, some constant, uh, times E to the voltage applied. In this case, that's VEB divided by the thermal voltage, phi T, where phi T is just kt over q okay so that's that's je uh or so i wrote it as i but equivalently we could write it as j uh just dividing by the area e to the veb over phi t and so this is uh je so well, well that was easy now if you wanted to be really precise you could also add this minus one uh to make sure there's no current at uh, when you apply no voltage, but uh, approximately when VEB is large, the, the original expression should do us just fine. Now there's just one slight subtlety. Um, this JS is JS for uh, a long diode on the, uh, on the P side and a short diode on the N side. Because previously we said that our um, current or our hole distribution within the base looked something like this. So we said it was just a straight line. In other words, it goes from some uh, PN at zero to this value zero. And so this is just the carrier profile of a short diode. And this is one junction. So this is the junction on the left hand side. And this is the junction on the right hand side. Whereas for a long diode, we would expect this to exponentially fall off. 
So that's that's the only difference between the two. Well, all right, this seems like it's not going to be too hard. So uh, can we find JC the same exact way? Um, and the answer is actually no, because this is a diode, but it's a reversed bias diode. So if you do the analysis, you're going to get that JC is equal to zero. But that doesn't seem right, because we've got a bunch of holes flowing in uh, from this left hand side. And they don't appear to be they don't appear to be going anywhere. So we'd expect they just go all the way across to the collector. They get swept across by this large electric field that we've built up inside this depletion region. And indeed, that is what's going to happen. So how do we figure out what JC is? Uh, well, the answer can actually be found in the carrier profile. Now we know in general that our current density is going to be some drift current density plus some diffusion current density. These are the major uh, components of, of current density. And so we need to figure out how much drift current we have and how much diffusion current we have. And given this carrier profile and also our electric field profile. Um, so first of all, what is J drift? So what is the, the drift current uh, in this device? Well, uh, for let me just erase this real quick so it's not super messy. So inside the N region, which is what we care about right now because we're analyzing what's happening in the base, because um, nothing interesting appears to be happening in the, in the collector or the uh, emitter, at least with respect to holes. So we know we've got these large electric fields uh, inside the depletion region. So inside the depletion region here and inside the depletion region here. And they're going to be bigger on the right hand side because we've reverse biased that side. But uh, don't worry about that. Uh, that, that. That's not super important right now. Um, so we expect the drift current to be extremely large in these depletion regions. So the drift current is extremely large in these regions, in these two depletion regions. But outside the depletion regions to uh, under the uh, abrupt depletion region approximation, there's no electric field inside the base, and there's no electric field inside the emitter or inside the collector. So we actually don't have to worry about uh, the drift current inside the base. J drift is just equal to zero. So the only thing we need to worry about is the diffusion current. So this is in not going to be equal to zero. So we're basically saying, well, I don't really care what happens in the depletion region. I'm just going to assume that any holes that get right to the edge of the depletion region immediately get swept across, and then all the interesting things happen in the base. So the next question is, well, what's the diffusion current? Well, we can figure that out from our equation for diffusion current. For holes, it's just minus Q times the diffusion coefficient times the derivative of the hole concentration and we said we know what the um what the profile is what this p uh p of x is within the within the base it's just this straight line here so what's the derivative or what's the slope of a straight line well um over the entire line uh it's just equal to the slope so it's just equal to whatever this uh base length is let's call it xb um, so this Pn of 0 divided by xb. That's just the slope uh, of this line everywhere along the line. So that's the slope here, that's the slope here, that's the slope everywhere. And because it's downward sloping, we should put a negative sign in front. So our diffusion current, and this is dp dx, so our diffusion current is just equal to QDP times PN of zero divided by XB. That's our diffusion current. And that's the diffusion current everywhere in the base, which is interesting because the diffusion current right here, right at this edge, this is JE, this is the emitter current. Uh, if we assume that no holes are lost in this left-hand depletion region, every hole that crosses this depletion region is going to make it into the base. So we'd expect that the currents are the same in each of those regions. Similarly, this is the collector current, JC. So if this 
is indeed a straight line, then JE is just equal to JC. So we have basically right now, this is a diode with a perfect bucket attached to it. So all of the holes that we inject uh, with this diode get collected by the collector because we have this, we've assumed we have this straight line um, carrier profile. And we initially assumed this line was straight because we said, well, the base, the base can be small. So for any ugly function, um, any, in any small region, the distribution is gonna look approximately like a straight line. So this tells us something interesting. If we want a perfect bucket, or a perfect collector, if we want to be able to collect all the holes, we want the base to be small. That's interesting. Uh, so that tells us how we want to design this BJT if we want to be able to get all the holes across this base region into the collector. And so what do we want this base to be small compared to? Well, we want it to be much smaller than the diffusion length of holes within the base. So if the holes manage to not crash into anything essentially, or not recombine, then this is a valid assumption. But what if XB is not much less than LP? What if it's on the order of LP? Uh, well, this is what we're gonna take a look at in the next video. And now lastly, what about the electrons? So what about the electrons? We've been talking about the holes this entire time. Well, uh, electrons, these are going to be flowing in general from the base. So we've got a bunch of electrons sitting in the base. And when we apply this voltage VEB, some of these electrons are going to flow from the base uh, to the emitter. But the collector um, isn't going to, essentially isn't going to see any of this. No electrons are gonna be flowing uh, from the collector as well. This, um, or rather the number of electrons we have in the collector is so tiny that the current from the base massively uh, massively outweighs them. So the electron current is actually going to be flowing like this. It's going to be flowing just in a loop from the base to the emitter. And so we're essentially getting current that's not being collected. Um, so current not being collected. And so for if we want to design a perfect bucket, if our goal is to collect all the incoming electrons, then this is very bad. Uh, this is very bad for designing our BJT. So how do we fix it? Um, well, you might say, uh, I, I don't know, but uh, maybe we can just reduce the number of electrons in the base. So maybe we can uh, make it so there's so much more hole current uh, coming from the emitter than uh, electron current coming from the base that it's essentially negligible. And that's indeed exactly what we do. So in designing a BJT, we want the doping in the base to be much, much less than the doping in the emitter. And so that's another cool thing. So we've sort of discovered uh, if we want to design a perfect bucket or uh, a perfect collector, we now have two uh, things that we want to design. So we want the doping in the base to be small compared to that in the emitter. And we want the base itself to be small because this uh, allows the holes to get through without bumping into anything. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please like and subscribe. If you have any questions, please feel free to post them down below and I'll see you next time.